Hi, this is Jelly Bling. How are you? This is project number three using the bundle Regal Flora. Regal Flora, and this is the purple design. I'll show you the other, the first two here in just a minute. But what do you think? Is that very non Christmas like and very happy? Not so much spring. It is regal, it is winter like. So this is today's project. And the first two, this is um, a program I have going once a month. There's a featured bundle and it's called Avid Stampers because it's somewhat advanced. All the stuff is put on, there's nothing held back. And um, I put together three card designs and I will mail them to you. Um, order the bundle through me between now and November 26th. And if you can use this host code, Regal Flora Bundle, item number 164034. It's only 4675. So here's the first one. And there's already a video tutorial out there on this one. And then this one, which I absolutely love. Isn't that beautiful? And then today's project. Three of them, very girly, kind of ornate, definitely beautiful. This is a card a person could never throw away. So, Regal Floor Bundle. That's the dies. Cheerful Daisy dies mostly for this gold little fern looking piece. Peaceful Seasons for the second layer. Some of these layers right here. And as we put them onto the card, you'll see close up what they really look like. And Countryside dies, of course, for this piece right here and right here. Okay, ready to get started? And I'll have in the video description the host code and the item number and links that include all the products. It shows all the products used for each of the three projects. Okay, so um, if you were to order the bundle, you would get through snail mail, three kits. And this is the kit we'll be working on today, the purple card. And you'll also get two other kits just like this. I'll do as much as I can, um, excluding items that you have in your bundle. And I can't do any stamping. But I usually try to stick to just the stamp set that the bundle, like the words that are in the bundle. So this one, you'll have no problems. If you don't have the dies for the... Um, what was that one called? Peaceful Season? That's okay. They're already done for you in your kit. And we'll get into this in just a minute. Regal Flora Bundle is in the mini catalog on page 34 and 35. And beautiful samples right here. Sometimes if ever I'm stuck or in a rut and it's like I don't know what to do, if ever you just make one of these, they're, they always look so much better in person and they'll get you... Um, happy to go different directions or maybe instead of pink flowers I could do yellow flowers just like little changes Here is the regal flora paper just beautiful Look at that even how those go together This was the blue card paper But it's just so pretty And the way that they all work with each other, like even these, it's a little bit busy, but you don't have to use a whole lot. That's today's paper. Beautiful paper. And then, of course, gold foil sheets. Okay, so let's see what's inside here. I hope for you, when you get the kit, it's like Christmas for you, too. I love putting the kits together. I take a lot of pride in them. Okay, so 
these are pieces a double bow embellishments and the gold um, fern type pieces this is for the top of the card take those out we'll be using them soon this is for the middle section of the card and I'll pull this out here in just a minute and the card I have loosely put together I put used um, temporary adhesive to attach these layers and with just a twist you can remove them and attach them permanently so let's do a little bit of that so these just give it a twist and it's right there and I could rub it off but because I know it's going to go right over the top I'm not too worried about removing it like look how pretty that is I love that that print some of these okay just about all of them it's just so hard to flip it over and um put glue on the other side in the middle and this is going to get so decorated if you don't have it perfectly in the middle it'll be just fine so that's pretty too this is just a study in all the different papers in this pack when I saw the paper I was drawn to it and then I thought oh I have so many flowers I don't need that I'll just get the paper but then when you have the paper it's really nice to have the stamps the flowers that go with it and the more I use it the more I really like this bundle okay the front is almost done so I have a few things set off to the side which includes some little paper slivers and you're like why did you save those they are going to be garbage but there's this piece here let me take this off you recognize the size four and a quarter by 11. then there is this piece you recognize which is five and a half by eight and a half but if you were to take this piece and put it in here it would be too big and it would hang out over the edges therefore All these things, there's I think four things here that I want to mention. Therefore, I cut off a sliver off of both of the sides. And you could see how fine of a sliver that is. It could go in the garbage now, but it just makes all the difference when putting the card together. Since I have this here, this is my first attempt <clears throat> at doing the inside of the card. This inside looks like the whole front of another card. <laughs> It's a little bit fancy, but I wanted to use the um, embossing folder. What is it called? Layered florals. So I attached these two pieces of paper and I ran them through. Oh, and I put ink on the inside of the folder to give it a little bit of depth. And because it was so thick and the designer paper was a bit thin, it cracked and it showed through the white and I just didn't like it. So I'm going to toss it out or I'll, I'll use it for something else, a different card but it's just interesting how putting ink on it um, really accentuates the pattern. And if you did this on a really super light paper, like even if I did it here and put ink on this side, it just, it would be stunning. That's, that's something to try later. Anyhow, tried. It's not really a failure, but it just doesn't work for today. And middle panel, I have a little note about that. So we'll do, I'll put that right here. And these are the pieces we'll stamp. We'll do these in just a minute. Sometimes when you're stamping a card, it's like, now how many of the flower trio? How many of the little one? What Now what do I make? How many of these big bunches? So I put this together. This is for the top of the card, the pieces, the middle of the card, and the inside. So we're looking here at the middle. You need this flower with a green stem and colored flowers and then three of that grouping of leaves. On the inside, we need just this one. And on the top, we need the single standalone, the trio. These are just things to stamp. The um, gold will already come in your kit. And this sprig is right up here. And then this grouping is one here and one there. But it's just nice to see if you want to do a screenshot, um, what what do I need to do? What do I need to stamp? And then I'll cut it out. And it's just nice to have it all there. 
Okay. So the embossing folder was used on just this piece right here of Highland Heather paper. And we'll pull this out in just a minute. But that will come already done for you. If you don't have the folder, it's okay. Your piece will come complete. Okay, oh, and then this block. This is an Amy tip. So I had this block for big background stamps. And then Amy says, oh, everyone's going crazy about big blocks. And I'm like, oh, okay. And she goes, when you're waiting for something to dry, you just put it on top, the weight of it holds it down so it dries flat. And so I just, oh, okay. And then the more I thought about it, and after I used it a few times for that purpose, I love the big block. So we'll be using the big block for that reason in just a few minutes. Okay, back to where we were. Um, let's see what's attached. Nothing's attached. I'll just start attaching things. Twist. Tony is doing a, a sports trip. I'm mean, supposed to be home at 10.30 tonight. It's like, okay, well, I'll just be in bed. That's fine. All is well. But he just sent a message. I'll be home at 10. And I usually go to bed at 10. And because he's not here, I don't feel the need to rush in and sit in my recliner and have evening time with him. So I'm kind of hoping that I could get this done right before he gets home. Because when he comes in, he's like, hey. How are you doing? What's going on? Oh, look how pretty that is. Oh. I wonder about making a card. Obviously, not quite so elaborate as this. But um, just with that in the, the Highland Heather, who knew? Those are beautiful together. Boy, I'm just zipping through this. Now, I'm going to not attach the white because chances are I'll mess up and I'll have to flip it over. I also have um, grape pulled out. I still have it over there. Um, I'll show you how beautiful it is with all this. Um, but I used the grape ink pad and then the heather paper. I don't know why. It worked out. Because the colors go perfectly together. Look how nice that goes too. But it, it, it casts a whole different feel on the card, I think. It works, but I think this is a little bit softer and more elegant and regal. Okay, so this big one, kind of like the base, the backbone of the card. Get it a little bit close to the edge. Not too much glue. I don't want it to smush out. And then, oh, that's right. Didn't stamp on that one. Put it in here, up in the corner. But because it's glue, I can adjust it. So, it's good there. It looks good right here. It's fine if a little glue comes out because it'll dry clear. Oh, let me do the big block. I see that is off just a little bit down here. Can you scooch it? If not, I'm still good with that. Might have to adjust the top a little. See, these are flush, so that's good. Okay, so to get those to stick, temporary adhesive off. <clears throat> okay, so in the meantime, this is inside piece. That could hang out with these guys. Let's see about you all get stuck together. Um, these pieces are all built right on top of the card front. We could start working on this. Okay, so those pieces are in here. And my little note says middle panel. Attach words to gold 
then attach to texture. Yes, and I'll show you why in just a minute. And there is the tiniest bow. I wonder if you missed that. It is just the cutest little thing right here. Teeny tiny bow. That is for right here on the flowers. So I'm going to emboss Missing You on here. That's the first step. I could do that. Use the Embossing Buddy. And hopefully I'll stamp it straight. Missing You. And I found with this stamp, good and inked, don't push down super hard. Push down, I'll show you, this much. Uh, that much. Because if you, oh, I did it crooked. I have another one ready, but this is a test of, I don't know that this is going to work. But if it works, you call me genius, it's okay. I don't think it's going to. So, I'm going to get all the moisture out of that Versamark. See how I'm being kind of heavy? <laughs> it doesn't look Blackberry Bliss anymore. And, yeah. I'm going to try to stamp it straight. I did crooked again. I mean, it's, it's going downhill. But don't worry. Actually, that isn't too bad. Let me try it. Let me try my little madness here. Because if it sticks just to my last stampin', have worked. If that worked, did you know, isn't this always why you, you wear a shawl? Oh, look at that. It got all the powder off. It's not really bright, but it worked. Okay, I'm going to try one more because I have one here and then just pick out the best. Okay, so why is that going crooked? Because it's a little bit crooked on here. Okay, so here's a tip. If ever you have a problem you keep stamping crooked, I'm going to put this right up here. <clears throat> and I'm trying to get the words parallel with the block. So now when I'm stamping it, I'm stamping the words not so much for what I see through the label, but more the block to, oh, that's really crooked. <sighs> I mean, that's really crooked. I could try the redo again, but I might as well just use that one. I don't know if you could tell. Bad. And I could stamp it first, then die cut it but I did a few of those and they didn't work out either. <laughs> Just lots of tries. Okay, this one is looking better and better by the minute. Okay, so the note says, attach the words to the gold, then attach to texture. Okay, so these are gonna go straight across there. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue in here and I'm gonna put it just in the center. Just, you see, just a little bit. That's because I'm gonna scooch it around. If I had glue all the way to the outside edges, when I scooched it around, I would leave like snail sludge on the gold and it would be very apparent. Actually, the words don't look bad. Okay, so who knew that? I didn't know that. You can embossing buddy really hard and stamp it again. 
Okay, so the reason that I have you attaching this piece to the gold first is because it's really easy to line it up, especially with just a little glue. You can kind of shift it. But also, from this side to that side, they're good. The amount from this little hole down is equal all the way around. And trying to do it, once you have it on here, somehow is just really challenging. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry just a little bit. In the meantime, I'm gonna take this ribbon, kind of weave it through here. Isn't this ribbon beautiful? I have a lot of it. So with ribbons that are a bit sheer or a little bit more open weave, when you work with them, they have a tendency to fray on the edges. So on the sample card, and I'll hold it up and you could decide if you want to do it. After you trim the edges to make them all pretty, and these turned out pretty good. They're not all frayed. Um, you could just put a touch of glue right along the edge and that will stop it from fraying. Okay, so this is good. This probably had just a second to dry. Therefore, I'm gonna put dimensionals, I would say around the whole gold and on the edge of the Blackberry Bliss but keep your dimensionals a little bit closer to just the center of the gold because you have to tuck all this greenery underneath and um, if you have dimensionals everywhere it's hard to tuck it in so i'll do them definitely on the blackberry bliss and maybe i'll do just one in the middle. That's a little skimpy, but I think it's going to benefit us in just a minute. Okay, so get that attached. That's good. And then these pieces, I have them cut out already, but I want to show you how I got the two-toned flowers. So I'll show you one of those. A little bit of scrap paper. That's a good size right here. So to get the two-tone flowers, I'm going to use Berry Burst and Gorgeous Grape. Berry Burst is going to be the lighter first step to this. Then I'm going to use a dauber and apply um, grape. So full strength, Berry Burst, dauber, down here at the bottom, because that comes from the stem. I'm letting the tips of the petals be a little bit softer, the lighter ink. And I'm going with the edge of the dauber, getting the inside of these petals. When I hold it up, you'll see where it's a little bit darker and a little bit lighter. Okay, so you could see the berry burst and you could see the grape. Now when you look on this, you're like, oh, that's how it got a little two-toned. Okay, so here they are. Let's start building. So for this, these are on the outside. I'll put one of them right down here. I'm going to do it with glue at the stem and then a dimensional out here. Oh, I'm going to have to get new dimensionals here soon. And I want to see the stem. When you tuck it way up under there, it, it looks fine, but I think it's a little bit better when you can see the stem. Okay. And then this goes on at this point, just with glue. I'll put a dimensional under the big flower at the top after I get the greenery in there. Oh, and I didn't do this. Remember how I had glue just in the middle of this, these words? I wanna get this just to tuck underneath just a little bit. There it is. 
Okay, so this is just, you're like, that's a green flower. That's not too exciting. And then you recognize this with the multicolored. So I'm gonna cut off just the flowers and glue them onto the green base right there. Now hold it up close here in just a minute. I'm cutting them a little bit smaller just because the green has already set like the little white outline all the way around. And sometimes if you don't cut it exactly straight, I might have like a double outline and I don't want that. So I'm gonna put a little glue here. A little glue there. And put this one on. And this one on. Okay, there it is. Okay, and then two of these, once again with glue at the bottom and a dimensional holding up the tips. See, now you know why I don't have dimensionals way up here. And same thing here. Okay. Then the little bow is bit of glue right there at the connection and we'll just let it set in there let the glue, glue soak into the fibers of the bow and then I'll trim make this a little bit shorter here in just a minute I'm just gonna let that set off to dry you know let me show you about kind of locking in these edges so they don't fray Just put glue and keep in mind it's going to dry clear but now they won't fray and it does make the edges of the ribbon just a little bit darker and that doesn't always happen with all ribbons this one it just happens to do that stay on little bow See the glue? Okay, dry. I could sit on the stamp pads. Okay, we're getting there. This big block has done its job, almost. I'm gonna use it to attach the white too. Okay, let's start working on the top. There, there. We'll be using those pieces. So the top, I started out by starting with the ribbon, kind of loosely attaching it with a glue dot. And it's gonna go right here. Maybe a little lower. Oop, that's really tearing it. But you know what? You're not going to see any of it because it's so covered up. That would drive me crazy right there, but I know it's going to be covered, so we'll be okay. Then another one.
It's better, it's covered up. Okay, then this flower. I'm gonna do just one dimensional, just because I know there's gonna be more tucked in underneath it. Okay, then the trio. These can be two dimensionals. This one I'll have at the bottom. These I think that they're looking upward. Glue. There you go. Right about there. And This can fill this void. Here's the gold foil from the, the cheerful daisy. Every time I do this gold foil piece, it's like I'm putting on too much glue. Somehow it all works out. So that's gonna go pretty much right over this piece. Now you know why I have just one dimensional on that flower. And I'll stick it down more in just a minute. Then one more gold foil for the other side. Isn't that just pretty? Pretty product. <clears throat> then these are, <coughs> excuse me, fine, purple fine shimmer. They come in three colors. Oh, I got a tickle, hold on. <coughs> Water. These in the center. <coughs> that didn't help the tickle. <coughs> okay. So that is done. Oh, the bow is wiggly, therefore it's gonna get glued. And the glue will dry clear, so it's okay if it looks a little funky right now, but it'll really lock into place here in just a minute. Okay, so this is for the inside, let's see. And that's good, oh, we have more bling. And then, okay, we need beautifulness. But this, because this is probably halfway dry, I'm going to just let it sit for just a minute. Right over there. So let's work on the inside. Sending love your way. Okay. We'll work on this piece. Sending love your way. Stamped in Mossy Meadow. It's going downhill. Okay. Oh, the glue is there. That's okay.
That's better. Okay, Mossy Meadow is still open. So if this flower goes right here, I'm gonna get the green Mossy Meadow, because right there, want this about here, right there. And then, let me give it just a second to dry. I'll put on my, my bling, my fine shimmer gems. Then I'm gonna use my embossing buddy to um, kind of dry up the green ink. And then I'm gonna stamp with Versamark and put gold little dots. And that little stamp, cute as can be, is in your bundle. So I don't want all the gold powder to stick to this. So I'm purposely being heavy over the green leaf grouping. Versa mark. Here it is. If you have the bundle, you have it. And I'm just stamping outside of where I think the um, the flowers will land. Just as a little background. And because we're going to use the heat tool. It's going to somewhat warp the paper, so I'll use the block to hold it down again to dry it after I stick on the, the white um, card inside, then I'll use the block to hold it down. And you know, <clears throat> I'm going to stick this on after I let the glue dry because I, just like now I was about to set this on here, but then when I put the block over, the embellishments were in the way of holding it like really flat. So I'm going to be smarter about it this time. A little extra glue down there. Okay, so that's going to go in here. Okay. Okay, I think that's it. So this is going to go on here. I'll just put that on. And all the pictures, it'll be all dried. I'm gonna put glue on the ribbon because I know it's gonna soak through the ribbon and it'll really lock it into place. Isn't that pretty? I would like this card right here too. You know what I could do? Oh, maybe? That's like a double whammy. As long as that glue on the ribbon doesn't stick. Okay, so that's gonna stick there. Here is today's project. Let me know what you think. I love it when you guys leave comments and thumbs up. I really, really appreciate that. Today's Regal Flora in purple. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.